The point of this video is to show you all eight of my credit cards. But not like that. I have a lot of credit cards and some have really high limits. So I'm gonna go over each credit card I have in the order that I got them and a little bit about them plus why I got them in the first place. Credit cards are bad. It's probably something that you've heard Dave Ramsey say and it's true for a lot of people because many people will get credit cards and then use all of the limit and not pay it off and then accrue a bunch of high interest debt, which is obviously what you do not wanna do. So if you're gonna get into the credit card game, start utilizing them to get a bunch of points, travel and fly for free, then you're going to need to make sure that when you utilize credit cards, you only do it with money that you have. So essentially you need to make sure that you pay them off on time and in full and use less than 30% of that credit limit in general. Okay, good. So the very first credit card that I ever got right here was this Discover It. And the reason that it was the first credit card that I ever got is because you do not need prior credit history in order to get this Discover card. Discover has a pretty great credit card that you can start with. And they also have a student version, which is pretty easy to apply for and get as well. Essentially, you have rotating categories every single quarter that you have to elect into that you can get 5% cash back from those specific categories. As well, at the end of your first year, they will match your cash back so you you get double the amount in that first year. The reason I got this card is because when I graduated in college, I had no credit card history, none of that, and I wanted to be able to buy a property, and I also just wanted a credit card so I could start earning some cash back. So right as I graduated, this was the first card I got, and I was approved because it's pretty easy to get approved for a Discover credit card. The next credit card that I got was this Amex Blue Cash Everyday card, and the reason I got it is because I was looking to buy property, and the lender said that I should have more than one credit account available because banks want to see that you have multiple credit cards and are able to handle paying them back. And the other reason I got this card is because I utilize Credit Karma or Credit Sesame and they can show you your credit score and then give you some recommendations for cards that you should probably get or things that you could be approved for. And this was one, it had no annual fee. Plus after spending $2,000 in the first three months, I got a $100 credit statement towards my credit card, which essentially felt like free money. So it was pretty good. Right now they have that same offer plus 3% cash back on some other categories like groceries. And they also give you a $7 Disney credit if you spend $12.99 every single month on Disney, which can be seen as good or bad because if you're already spending on that stuff, then it's pretty good. But if you don't normally want the Disney bundle, then you might as well not just get it so that you can get $7 off. My next credit card is the Capital One Platinum credit card. And I think I pronounced that slightly incorrectly. And it's because this credit card is a piece of crap to me. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Again, I got it because my lender said I should have at least three credit cards before I got my first loan for my first property. This was another one that was easy to apply for and be approved. Currently has a $500 limit. I use it once a year so that I can keep my credit age with it because it's one of the oldest credit cards that I have, but I don't ever use it. It is in no way platinum. So I have really little to say about it and not really something that I would recommend other than the fact that you might just need a credit card and will probably get approved. The next credit card that I got was this Chase Sapphire Preferred, and this was a fantastic first card to get into the idea of traveling for free and gaining a bunch of points just by spending money that you were already going to spend. And currently it has a 60,000 point signup bonus after you spend $4,000 in the first three months, which is the same signup bonus I got about four years ago when I got this card. A year ago, it was about a 100,000 point signup bonus, which is obviously a lot better than it is today, but 60,000 chase points can take you pretty far, literally. The card also comes with a $50 statement credit for a hotel, which is new in the last couple of years, but obviously you do have to spend money on a hotel in order to receive those $50 off. And if you weren't planning on staying in a hotel anyway, I wouldn't just go out of your way to get this $50 off. And this card has a $95 annual fee. And if you're able to strategically use that hotel credit, it's more like a $45 annual fee. And the reason I keep it is because you can pair it pretty well with some of the other non-annual fee cards and earn more points with better cash back rewards. The next credit card that I got, and this one is very fancy, would be the Amex Platinum. Let's see if we can listen to it. That is some thick, thick metal, and this card comes with a hefty annual fee of $695. So when I first got this card, it had a $550 annual fee plus a 120,000 point signup bonus after spending, I believe it was five or $6,000 in the first six months. 
which those 120,000 points was definitely worth the annual fee. I was planning on canceling this card after the first year, but I really like being able to get into lounges for free with it, which is when you're traveling, you can utilize this card to get into a bunch of different lounges. They namely have the Centurion Lounge, but if you're traveling with certain airline partners, you can get into those other lounges for free, which typically costs about $60 when you're traveling to get into them if you just want to pay. And they're pretty good because they have free food, drinks, water, and just a nice place to relax. But in year two, I was planning on getting rid of this card, and I ended up not. The reason I didn't and why I inevitably paid that $695 annual fee in year two is because I called and asked for some type of retention offer, so they gave me an extra 30,000 points as long as I spent $3,000 in three months, so to me, that was worth it, and I got those extra points that I could utilize towards more free travel. Plus, I'm able to keep that lounge status, and for the first couple of years, you can have a partner who comes with you into the lounge for free. So often when I'm traveling with Mia, we'll both go to the lounge, but I actually lose that at the end of January, which is coming up in about a week. So that makes the lounge not worth it as much for not being able to have someone else that you can bring in with you. The Amex Platinum also has a number of credits that you can get that can make that $695 annual fee seem a little bit better. For example, they have a digital entertainment credit, which is $240. But it's actually not $240, it's $20 a month. So you can't spend more than $20 a month with it. And that can be for things like Audible, or it could be Disney+, Plus, Hulu, and some other things that they have on that category. It used to actually be really bad and you could use it for virtually nothing. But now some of the things that you can use it for make more sense. The other two things that I actually use with the card would be the $15 a month Uber credit when I'm using Uber or the Walmart Plus, which I think is about $13 or $14 a month. That is also free with the credit card. And I use that a lot for my Airbnbs because Walmart Plus, when you order stuff, you can specify when you actually want it delivered at a certain date and time, which works well when you have guests coming in and out. Some other really not great things with this card, in my opinion, that you get as a credit that people count towards the value. Saks Fifth Avenue credit, a credit towards using Equinox as your gym, which is wildly expensive. And again, that hotel credit, if you are planning to stay in a hotel, and traveling, it can be a pretty good $200 credit, but you do have to spend a good amount of money in order to actually receive that credit, so it's not really worth it if you weren't planning on to use it anyway. Overall, I wouldn't really recommend this card as a beginner starter card, but if you wanna have that luxury card that gives you that lounge access, then it's a pretty good card to utilize, especially if you're going to travel a lot. The next card that I got, I actually don't have here right now, and that's because I canceled it. And people often think that canceling credit cards is really bad, but it's actually a myth. If you have a credit card that you've canceled, obviously it can take away from your credit limit, which is the only negative thing. So I had the Barclays Advantage Aviator card, which if you spent literally anything, you got 60,000 American Airlines points, which I used for a round trip flight to Hawaii, which was pretty cool. And then I canceled the card because I really never needed to use it, nor did I want it, and it had a $99 annual fee. So essentially when you cancel your credit card, it will still age on your credit report for 10 years as long as you closed it with a good standing. Now, where this could go wrong when I was talking about the credit limit, let's say you had a total $10,000 credit limit with three cards, and one of those cards was a $6,000 limit. If you get rid of that one card with the $6,000 limit, it is going to lower your entire credit limit, ultimately lowering your credit score. Otherwise though, it's totally fine to cancel a credit card as long as you've paid it off before you cancel it. The next credit card that I got was my Chase Inc. Business Preferred credit card. This credit card comes with a $95 annual fee, similar to the Chase Sapphire Preferred card, but this is the business card, and this was my first ever business card that I received. But it comes with a 100,000 point sign up bonus, although you do have to spend $15,000 in order to get there. Personally, I don't spend $15,000 in three months, so the idea of doing that with my regular personal spend would make me want to throw up a little because I definitely am never doing that kind of thing. Although with my business, I can get there a little bit more easily. And the reason I got this specific card and was okay with the annual fee and the amount of points that I was receiving is because I had to change out both boilers and hot water tanks and got a dual system in my duplex at the same time. And the plumber who was doing it took a credit card. Now the cost to do all of that was roughly 14,000 some odd dollars. So I got pretty close to that $15,000 amount in order to actually get this paid for. And it was a thing that I actually had to do anyway. So it worked well to get that credit card to essentially lower the total cost of what I was spending to change out those boilers in my property. I also keep this card now because it pairs well, similar to the preferred with some of the no annual fee business credit cards, which instead of earning cash back with them, you get more and more points. 
Speaking of would be the next card I got was the Chase Freedom Unlimited card. This one has no annual fee and you can get cash back up to 3% on dining and they used to have 5% on gas but they don't have that anymore. Now it's 5% on groceries for the first number of months. I'm not exactly sure the number. But the reason I opened this credit card is because I got an Airbnb in April of last year and I knew I was gonna spend a lot of money on furniture. So with all that money I was spending on furniture, I figured might as well get a credit card and get a sign up bonus because this one, after you spend $500, you get $200 back unless you have a Chase Sapphire Preferred or another Chase credit card that gives points back, then you can get 20,000 Chase points. And that's what I did with this card. I got 20,000 Chase points, plus I've referred it to a few other people and I get 20,000 points every time I refer it to someone. So if you want one of these credit cards, mostly the Chase ones are great with the referral because you get that same signup bonus, then check out the link in the description below and you would help me as a creator by getting me some of those points, plus you get a fantastic credit card. But for the Amex Platinum, for example, you're going to find yourself a better bonus somewhere online rather than going through my referral link. So if you want that one, go online, incognito tab, instead of using my referral link. Anyway, back to the card at hand. This card was also great because it had a 0% APR for 15 months, which means I could just spend the minimum payment and not actually accrue any interest. So as I was getting income from the Airbnb, I could pay off that credit card and not accrue any high interest debt. So it's essentially a free 0% loan for 15 months, which is pretty cool. And often the case when you open a new credit card, it has that 0% rate. This card also gave me a $23,500 credit limit, which is a pretty high limit and not nearly as much as I'm gonna spend and obviously helps with my overall credit usage. So it was really nice to have this added bump of all of that money for a credit limit. The next card that I got, and I actually just got this about a week ago, was my Chase Business Unlimited card, which is very similar to the personal unlimited card, but this is the business one. This one right now actually has the highest signup bonus offer it's ever had, where you get $900 back after spending $6,000 in the first three months and I spent $6,000 in the first three days because I bought a hot tub. And again, like that unlimited personal card, this unlimited business card pairs well with the Chase Inc. Business Preferred card because instead of $900 back, I get 90,000 Chase points, which if used well are far more valuable than 900 real dollars. That business unlimited card also has no annual fee and I did the same thing where I have that Airbnb and I have that money that I put on it for the hot tub and I don't have to pay it off right away because it has the 0% APR intro for 12 months. And overall, with all of these credit cards, I have had lots of points and I've used a lot of them for travel. And currently I have 77,000 Amex points and 313,000 Chase points. And again, if you want me to get more and support me as a creator and you want one of these credit cards, please use my referral link down below and I would greatly appreciate it. That's it, there you have it. Those are all of the credit cards that I have, why I got them and some reasons why maybe you could get them yourself. Obviously, I like Chase a lot more than any other type of credit card company, especially if you close your Chase card, you can get that sign up bonus again later. But with American Express, you only get that sign up bonus once. So just something to think about there if you end up closing some of those cards and then trying to reopen them for the bonus. If you guys like that video and want to learn more about financial freedom and personal finance, definitely scroll down, hit that subscribe button and tap the notification bell so you get notified when I make videos like this. And don't forget to follow me on TikTok and Instagram where I make similar videos, but in short form. So thanks again for watching and more wealth is coming your way.